I'm going to extend from what Omoresh have highlighted, the role of design. At Cranfield, we have students and staff from over 60 different countries. I emphasize Cranfield has a stake in global manufacturing. And we encourage our students to be global leaders. And that's important. When we get students from India, we talk about Indian challenges in manufacturing. Because knowing just about UK manufacturing is not good enough. They need to understand what it means to manufacture for a billion compared to 60 million. And there is a fundamental difference when you scale up. And that's the research needs to be done. And there's a big gap in manufacturing, in systems thinking. And I'm going to touch some of that tomorrow too in my own research area of True Life Engineering Services. Let me give you some example where Cranfield is already doing some work to affect larger population. We call it engineering for life. That's our purpose at Cranfield. We engineer products, we engineer services for people, and also we engineer products which live longer so that we consume less material. Very, very important. Today, a large number of colleagues in India not consuming enough. 6% of people are consuming significant energy. Imagine there will be a world when India will consume near 100%. Where is that resource going to come from? And I wish that day is sooner rather than very long. Resource will be a big challenge going forward. And I'm going to touch on that. I'm going to touch on entertaining people in the villages. I come from a country, United Kingdom, where people have better quality of life in villages than in cities. I want to see India leap frog to a society where people are proud and have much better quality of life in villages than what cities can offer. That's the golden age of India. And by the way, that's also the same for Kenya. That's also the same for China. All these big countries need to make people have quality life in villages. And that's what I would like to see. I'm going to give you some example. Today, India is importing about 500,000 tons of asbestos every year. One of the largest consumer of asbestos in the world, India is. And do you know how carcinogenic asbestos is? In United Kingdom, this is totally banned. If you find a single example of asbestos in roof of a building, that building is closed down with immediate effect. That's how strong regulations are. In India, it is rife. India is ex importing 500,000 tons every year, and that number is growing. There is alternative material, and India can make a difference. India produces significant volume of jute, natural fibers. And Cranfield is actually researching with some of my colleagues how to use jute as a material to create alternative roofing, which can replace asbestos, developed entirely from local resources. This is not rocket science. This is about making technology accessible to people. And yes, there is initial research and development that needs to be done. We need to perfect the 
RTM method of molding these jutes using resins to form shapes, corrugated shapes. We need to scale up the production. Yes, all that has to be done. But it's not impossible to create a new business sector in India, which will create jobs. And that's the vision we need more and more. We have many people like this in India, whether it's a tannery. I come from Kolkata. Near Kolkata, arsenic is a major problem. It affects people's life. And do you know what? There is polymer, there is natural polymers like cellulose, chitin, chitosan. They can absorb heavy metal ions if we develop them properly. And some of the research at Cranfield focuses on processing materials to improve its absorption of heavy metal ions. So we have designed three different structures, nanofibers. Essentially, it's all about increasing surface area so that efficiency of absorption increases for heavy metal ions. That's about changing people's life. We need to productionize this. We need to reduce the cost of doing this. That can only happen if a country like India takes these challenges on, develops this technology, mass produces it, and help the world. India can drive price in the global market down. And that's the responsibility of India. I was very encouraged in my last visit when one colleague said, we know what poverty actually means. And it's us who can solve it. And we'll solve it for the world. And that has to be part of the ambition for us when we talk about new materials. I mentioned about having entertainment in villages. Think about those ladies, I think Omaris showed, who walks four or five hours a day and come home, eat food, and wake up early in the morning again to start working. They deserve better. They deserve entertainment that what people in cities enjoy. And maybe even more, even better. And that has to be the mentality going forward. How can we make villages better than cities? Not just at par with cities. And here is an example. We research on solar concentrating power, which are industry scale. But we also work on Fresnels, which are designed for flat applications. And it can be made by plastics. And this particular one example, and the top, where you can have solar concentrating power hosted on telephone masks, it could be any pole, with proper storage facility, it can give energy to deep rural areas where there is no electricity. And that could be used in the evening for entertainment. Cinemas. Think about villages having internet cafes, sports facilities, training centers. Think about a country of 1.5 billion in the future where every citizen could have training budget from the state. Can you think about that? That's what Singapore does. Singapore gives every citizen $500 to train themselves every year. Imagine an ambitious goal of giving every Indian training package of 10,000 rupees every year. That's what world is about. They are changing and changing fast. Here is another example of industrial, small local industry applications of bio oils creating from microalgae and organic waste using solar power. These are small plants. Imagine our unemployed youth could take bank loans 
to set up these community projects to make biofuels. And if you can solve logistics problem in India, I come from suburbs, and I can tell you even today, in near, this is about 10 kilometers outside Calcutta city, you cannot get about 50% of the product I can get in a reasonable city area, in my place. And by the way, this has improved significantly in the last 50 years. I'm talking about serious issue with logistics, with access of facilities in rural areas. We need to optimize product and logistics, how to send that product to different parts of the country together. And that's not happening at the moment enough. We organized Manufacturing 2075. We genuinely discussed how manufacturing is going to change 60 years from now. This was on 7th of December last year. If anybody is interested, I can send you the report. Part of that discussion was colonizing moon. Yes, we are going to colonize moon. And European Space Agency and NASA is going to put 100,000 people on the moon in the next few years. That's our goal. But along with that, there was discussion about how socially we are going to change. And one of the very interesting aspects I want to highlight here, cottage industry is coming back. And you will hear from Dr. Stephen Fox, Professor Fox, about his idea how to industrialize differently. But we talked about customizing product by people in local areas where they are highly connected. Remember, our villages can have high-speed satellite-based connections in the future. Every rural place, every house in the country will have high-speed broadband. Why not? Then those cottage industries begin to network better. Imagine India's postal services starts providing rural logistic service. Postal service has very, very strong, very good penetration in rural India. Can they provide logistics? If I make a product in uh, deep rural areas, can I sell it through my post office? Can I receive money in my other account, in my post office account? That's the kind of future we should be imagining. Nothing less. Here we talked about Industry 4.0. For me, what is important is this connectivity, increased connectivity. And with infrastructure investment, with rural areas connected through digital technologies, cottage industry will come back. It's a different generation of cottage industry where you can adapt products for local needs faster because you have less constraints of significantly large corporate and big factories. You can do it faster, you can customize it cheaper. Very important in all this is standards. India could lead inclusive manufacturing for the world, but India should also lead standards development for inclusive manufacturing. Without that, sustaining technology development, getting the ideas across the world would be difficult. So I would like to say this community also thinks about Developing standards, how to connect rural village houses, small cottage factories together. What standards should we produce? I'm not at all saying that they will produce low-tech products. They will produce high-tech products with standards in deep rural areas. That's my vision. Thank you.